37? Yes. You're a female here for pain in the right knee. She won't over the lateral kind of going on for three weeks. She uh, was a runner up until about three months ago, but she doesn't like running in the cold weather. So she stopped about three months ago. And actually this developed after she stopped running, uh, but she has pain mostly going up and down stairs in this part of her knee. Um, that's really what the exam is, is significant for. She um, has a little bit of lateral joint line tenderness, otherwise the knee is stable. First clip, we're... Here we're going to focus on anatomy of the lateral knee and lateral thigh. Here we're focusing in on the knee. We can see the iliotibial band and the biceps femoris muscles, both the short and the long head. Also, you can appreciate the semimembranosus muscle and semitendinosus muscle above that. And you can appreciate some of the neurovascular structures on the back of the knee. This patient did not have a Baker cyst, but this model does delineate a Baker cyst. Here you can also appreciate the medial lateral sural cutaneous nerves that branch off the common perineal and tibial nerve. And now we're going to go ahead and make the biceps femoris muscle slash tendons translucent. You can appreciate this adventitious bursa underneath it. And this is what I believe this patient has, some sort of rubbing of the biceps femoris tendon and muscle over the lateral femoral um, condyle slash epicondyle, I believe caused this adventitious bursa, which you can appreciate here. Looking at the um, lateral epicondyle, and just, uh, I don't know what I keep, no. So here you can appreciate a little bit of bursitis underneath the ITB band. So lateral epicondyle, we can see um, a little groove where the popliteus tendon lives. So I'm trying to put, here's where she's tender. Um, oh, yeah, it's below the bone. Uh, she does have some hypoechoic signal. Here we can see the fibula head on the right. We're at 1040. It's a pretty normal view. You can look at the um, lateral caudal ligament, which is a long kind of lax ligament going from the lateral pecondyle all the way down towards the fibula head. You can see the joint line here. It looks like she has a good joint space. Here you can see this hypoechoic with some mixed echogenicity signal. And this is where she's tender. So this, I believe, is an adventitious bursitis under the biceps femoris tendon slash muscle junction. And I'm not aware of a bursa that would normally live in this location, and that's why I'm calling this an adventitious bursitis. Here again, you can appreciate the long and short head of the biceps femoral musculature blending into a tendon. We can also appreciate some of the hyaline cartilage over the lateral femoral condyle posteriorly, and it looks like a pretty healthy layer of cartilage. You can also appreciate the layering of the muscles, appreciate the short head of the biceps femoris muscle. It's deep and broad and again feeds into the biceps femoris tendon along with the long head of the biceps femoris. And here we are, we're just going approximately again. We can see a nice looking uh, biceps femoris muscle basically feeding into the tendon and as the tendon goes distally it splays over the fibula head and most of its anterior and posterior aspects which is why you can see some broadening of the tendon distally here in this image. So here we are now with an axial view. We can see that pretty compact ITB and a mild case of bursitis underneath the ITB. You can see the vastus lateralis underneath that and also the biceps femoris you can see here to the left side of the screen short head. Now we're going distally you can see the ITB converging and kind of like broadening out a little bit. Remember, when it uh, crosses a joint, it attaches to that proximal lateral tibia at Gertie's tubercle. You can appreciate, again, a mild case of ITB bursitis. So now we're trying to see the ITB and the biceps femoris at the same time. So here we are. Um, we're going down the thigh. You can see how the tendon is starting to form, at least of the biceps femoris long head. you got the short head muscle underneath that. And deep to that, you have the adductor magnus muscle. You can appreciate how the fibers are going in a different direction of the adductor muscle versus the biceps femoris. And now we're going distally. And here we can see that bursitis in an axial view, in a cross-sectional view, how it just kind of juts under the, the biceps femoris tendon and muscle. So that's one of the nice things of ultrasound. You can kind of like target and, and really focus your exam on where she's tender. Here again, you can appreciate that bursitis kind of on that anterior aspect of the biceps femoris uh, tendon and just near the muscle as well. The short head of the biceps femoris. 
appreciate the ITB as you go anteriorly. And also, uh, the LCL lies between the ITB and the biceps femoris, so it was my feeling that that's where the LCL lives.